Nortent Gamme 6 Polycotton or 6PC. Today I'm going to give you a review of this tent. I want to show you things that I like with this tent and I'm also going to show you a few things that I don't like with this tent. And of course that's with everything. There is pros and cons with all gear that you have. This is new for me last season, so this will be the second season I using it. My name is Matti, I'm working as a dog musher and nature guide up in northern Sweden, just above the Arctic Circle in Jokmok. I do it together with my partner Stina and we run a small business, so outdoor life is what we're doing for a living. Noor Tent is a new brand for me. I just found them some years ago, two years ago, something like that. And Normally I've been using mostly Hilleberg tent. Hilleberg is a kind of top quality product, high-end product. And Noor tent, I don't really know, but it's a new brand. They are produced in China, if I understand everything right, but the company is from Norway. The price level on these products are much lower than the price on the Hilleberg tent. I don't know if you can compare these two tents really with each other and there is some small details that I actually see that they put more effort into Hilleberg than into Noor tent but there is also details with Noor tent that I really like and right now when I'm doing this video I'm out here with 10 of our dogs and I made a training run and I stopped for camping here one night the gummy tent it's a self-standing construction. It's a dome tent. And you have these three bows that you start with when you're putting it up. And then you have two additional bows that goes uh, cross over. It is a special way how you put it up. So if you get this, uh, you should really look into an instruction video how to, to pitch the tent. I don't going into that right now, but I can tell you that, that I tried to pitch it without looking at this video and I tried to pitch it alone and that was annoying. After looking at this video and practice a few times, now I can easily pitch it by myself. Uh, it's not as easy as a tunnel tent in snowstorm, but I'm born with a tunnel tent in my hands, more or less. So, a tunnel tent I can pitch in really, really bad weather. Maybe I can do that also with this tent after a while, but I also... I, I, I know how the situation can be when you're out in a snowstorm. And uh, I'm very picky with my skills. I really need want to know that I can do it in bad weather. And I need more practice with this tent. As I said, I only use it one season. I don't know, maybe 20 nights in total, maximum. So I can't say that I have used this tent a lot yet, but I like it very much. The construction is that you have some bows like this that goes in some channels and other are just snapped like over here. So it is not super difficult to pitch it, but you need to know how to do it. There is a lot of attachment points like this with ropes and there is also more places where I can add even more ropes than this and I will add more ropes to it. This one you should turn it around the bow and then put it out. I had to say that this is one of the details that Hilleberg should learn. Look. You have the rope here and there is a small rubber string that you put around the rope and uh, you tighten it. Then you have the rope like this. This makes the life much more easy. So I don't know why not all tent brands are doing like this. Really good. This tent has a kind of snow mat as you see. Uh, you can pull them out like this and you can add snow on top of them. If you do that, it will make the tent much more sturdy into the ground. Uh, when you're talking about snow mats and when you're talking about that with Hilleberg, 
Hilleberg say that they don't want it because their tents are made to take the power in the rope. But it seems like new tent have made the snow mats and probably they have made some calculation that it should be good. And when you add snow on the snow mats, no winds can sneak in under and going into the tent. And that's really good. So I kind of like snow mats, but I don't really know if it's good or bad. As you see up here, this tent has a stove yak. And the stove yak is a kind of silicone thing on the tent where you can put the chimney through the roof. Now the chimney is not straight, but I have been messing around with the stove inside, so uh, yeah. But that's how it is sometimes. This material is polycotton. I don't really know exactly, but it is a kind of cotton fabric and you get much less condensation if you use that. This fabric have a kind of ventilation straight through the fabric. You can get this tent also made of this um, normal tent fabric that's more normal. The tent will get much much more lighter but you will also get condensation and I was thinking about getting that tent first uh, with not with polycotton but now I really enjoy this cotton canvas tent and it's a total different feeling inside it especially when you have the stove because in the morning you get a little little bit condensation inside but the condensation absorbs into the fabric and dries out and just disappear when you have a normal tent with a normal fabric the condensation turns into water drips and that's falling on your clothes it's falling down and you see that very much in the normal tents during the winter so polycotton thumbs up for polycotton and a stove yak that's really giving me a lot of comfort in this tent this tent have two big doors one on each side each of these doors also have a mosquito net a mesh so you can really close the whole tent and get rid of mosquitoes if you want the big door is uh, yeah it's nice but there is a few things with the door that I'm not really enjoy and one of these things is that the zipper don't go around you can't really close the door totally the door will always be open down here on the lower part and when you go to the mountains when you do snowstorm stuff that's that's not good uh, I'm a little bit worried for that actually for the first time when I end up in snowstorm the storm should come in that direction not with the door one door here and one door on the opposite but the storm should come in that direction the wind should hit the tent in that direction that's where it's strongest the door is one I really want it and I have right that to no tent also the second thing that is uh, a kind of problem is the zipper because the zipper when you look at them they are very very thin it's maybe okay quality on the zipper itself but when they when the teeth are so small uh, and it's snowing and you have the wood stove on inside the snow melts and this gets as frost on the zipper and then it's so easy to destroy it when you open and close it if if I could wish I would be have a more sturdy zipper and I want the door to be possible to close all around then that thing have been totally fine also so to this tent you can have an inner tent I don't know if it's a half nest full nest or uh, exactly how the inner tent looks like but there is one or two different models of inner tent that you can have and they're easy to attach you just click it in and have it 
I choose to not have the inner tent to this tent because I use this tent mostly during the winter. Instead of inner tent, I bought a floor from Nur Tent. The floor is, uh, you can choose to cover the whole floor or you can choose to cover half of it or you have an opening for the stove because you should not have the stove straight on the floor, of course. I very often choose to have have the floor half and use the other half of the tent for my group so they can sit here and eat. So I use this tent very much as a group tent when I'm doing the dog sled expeditions. And we easily fit five person, cooking gear, dog food, everything that we need into the tent is what we bring. I sleep in this also. Right now when I'm alone here I organize everything a little bit different and uh, I just brought a tarp where, where I'm sleeping. You can see that there is one snow mat going out and one snow mat is coming in here. And when you add the floor, you connect the floor to this. And they are color marked, so it's kind of, kind of easy to know how to attach the floor. Uh, this is also good in summertime if you use this without inner tent or without floor because then this will be mosquito safe and uh, yeah really good i used it in uh, summer times and tested it in rain now this tent is still new so i had no problem in rain it didn't rain through it and as long as you keep a fire in the stove it push the moisture out of the tent fabric and uh, yeah, that's how it works with tippies, and we always use tippies like that, so this should be okay. You maybe had to add some coating or yeah, impregnation on the fabric now and then, but uh, for winter use I don't think you need any impregnation. You just need a stove and some firewood. Yes, and then we have the stove. This stove is Winterweld Fast Fold. I don't know exactly how big it is. I write it up here maybe. And what I know is that the stove is 3 kg and the pipe is nested. So the pipe comes in section. It's not the one you're rolling, you know. Uh, this pipe is really good when you are tired, when you are in the deep snow and so on because you just build it up. And it's kind of long pipe and if you want to roll such a long pipe when you're tired that's I promise that's a moment for irritation so this saved a lot of energy and irritation for me stove pipe three kilogram I had the smaller first the one kilogram stove uh, Winnerweld ultralight backpacking I think it's called and uh, for me that was not big enough. I need a bigger stove. <coughs> Noor tent also sells stoves, but I think they don't have this titanium. I don't know. I will do a review of the stoves later on also, but not right now. Normally I put a big piece of plywood under the stove and uh, I organize things totally different than now. Now I just put Two logs under it and yeah that, that works also so and if we look up here there is small openings so you see you can open it and like this and then you can close it if you want it mosquito safe it's not snowing in here it's uh, sometimes you close on one side and open on another side and so on but really good ventilation in the top and hot moisture air goes up and you want to get rid of it. <coughs> I have few small holes here. That was during one of the first tour when I used it and I did, did burn a lot of uh, spruce firewood. Spruce makes sparkles. Sparkles fly out of the chimney and burn the fabric. Yeah, that's not good. But it's not a big deal, you just put some glue or something over it and then it's okay again. 
and then we have to look here here's another kind of ventilation there is two of them one on each side you can open them from outside or close them from outside and you can attach a rope and pull it out so they are open I think that the air comes in here and goes out up there all this kind of ventilation is good it's also super good that you can close this and or keep another open and so on and they are opposite side because when you have hard wind you had to close some of them if we look at the condensation you see this black fabric here here on the lower part you see there you get condensation you don't get condensation on this it's no big deal here now I haven't been fired for a while so that's why I got condensation back but this fabric is dry and really really nice I really enjoy this this attach point for the inner tent I use them for a rope like this because then I can hang my things for drying there dog harness and I also put um, a LED lamp here, as you see, here, because I put a LED lamp, LED, LED thing all around the whole thing, and then I get nice light inside the tent, and I can actually sit here and read, and I can make nice pictures from outside, and I, you will see them. There is one thing that could be nice to have, and that's a kind of mesh pockets that you can hang up here, because then you can take a pocket a mesh pocket and hang it click it in somewhere and you can dry your socks there during the night or something like that especially if you're not alone in the tent it's good if more person can dry things and if you're out with kids or people that are not used to be outdoor it's good that you want have his bag and Anna Lena have his bag, her bag, and so on, because then you can organize it much better. So, all over, this tent maybe saved me from having to be retired from camping life. You know, when you're working outdoor as much as I do, and you do a lot of camping trips, and when you're 20, you can sleep under a tree in a sleeping bag, or maybe just under the tree, and that's fine. When you're not 20 anymore, and you do it a lot it's nice with more comfort with this tent I can spend weeks outside without needing a cabin and I can dry out things I can have a relaxed comfortable lifestyle in the tent it helps me a lot when I do the tours up in exposed terrain I also need something that is self standing I could have picked another tent that are with a more lightweight fabric and maybe I will try one of them in the future but this PC is really really good polycotton and uh, I like the atmos uh, atmosphere not atmosphere I like the environment the moist less no moisture thing inside there from the polycotton that's really good I could have chosen a tippy, but to put up a tippy on the snow when it's windy, it's not an option. You need a tent with, with poles actually, and a tunnel tent or something like this. I could have put a stove jack into one of the Hilleberg tents, but they are still kind of small. This is much more roomy, really roomy, really nice. Do I recommend this tent for you? Yes, I do. I recommend this tent for you who not are a backpacker because you don't care with this tent. This is like 17 kilo with the stove and everything I bring on longer tours. So it's nothing for the backpack. If you do ski tours and you have a pulka, you can put it in the pulka, and, uh, but not for a solo trip maybe. For base camp trips, if you are a skier, this is really good. You ski in somewhere, put it up, and you keep it as a base camp. That's really good. You can choose a lighter four-person tent, 
and then it's maybe better for you if you are a skier or something like that but it don't come with polycotton yet maybe they do it later i don't know if you are a dog musher if you are a snowmobile person or if you're camping close to the car the weight of this tent is nothing for you then you can just put it in the sled put it in in the car and head out because then it's suddenly a lightweight tent if you compare it to a lot of other tents that you're using a lot of people in sweden use kind of pop-up tent called ice fish and so on and uh, I would say they are like 40 kilo maybe so this is just half the weight and it's not difficult to put this up not popping up by itself but it's not difficult and um, I'm happy with this I really recommend it if you're searching for a lightweight tent with a stove you should look for seek outside or some other brands that make this two kilo three kilo together with the stove kilogram tents you know these small tiny things that we use in summertime thank you for watching thank you for thumbs up and all the comments you will give about the tent probably thanks for that also i like your input you should know that uh, if you like what you've seen please subscribe if you don't like what you see head over to another channel that give you what you like and what you want but I hope I see you next video. Ciao.